Right. Uh, let's bring in Texas uh, Congressman Henry Cuellar. Uh, welcome back, Congressman. Goes great to see you. Good morning to you all. Uh, Congressman, this has been your issue forever. You put Democrat and Republican aside. You just try to secure the border for the people that put you in office. You have some company this time that wants to keep Title 42 around from your party, Senator Hassan, Kirsten Sinema, Senator Kelly. So why is the president not listening? You know, we don't know because, look, you can't say we have a, a pandemic or a public health issue here, but then say everything's fine at the, at the border and then lift the Title 42, which is a health order. You just can't have both. And, and we know, like you all said a few minutes ago, 221,000 people this last month. And certainly right now, the cartels are looking at Title 42. The moment they lift that, you're going to see seeing a lot more people coming across. It's daunting. Uh, it, it, it's jarring, really. And it's got to be even more frustrating for you, Congressman, as a member of the Democratic Party, to see politicians at the very top who seem to uh, not want to address the problem. And, and ultimately, there's serious consequences, and you know it better than we do, including the fact that in, we're now getting information that in 2021, there were 23 known or suspected terrorists caught at the U.S. southern border in 2021 alone. Those are the ones we know about in Congress and the ones we can actually do a background check on, which most you cannot. And that does not account for the people that are, were not encountered by law enforcement. So this is a serious national security issue, too. You know, in the old days, it, it was Mexicans coming in to come and look for work, and then they would go back to their country with the monies that they made. Then you start seeing about 12, 14 years ago, Central Americans coming in. Right now, we're seeing people that are coming from, you know, 50, 60 countries all across the world. A lot of them have good intentions, but like you all mentioned, some of them are going to come in with bad intentions, and that's what worries me. And, and one more thing. If you talk to Border Patrol, this is very important. In the Laredo Border Patrol, only 40% of their men and women are actually doing uh, work at the border. Uh, if you look at the Rio Grande Valley, where most of the people are coming in, you'll have 50 to 60% of the people that are, are out, there in, uh, out there doing processing work. So think about that. 60% in both of those sectors right now, their men and women are changing diapers are making food for the migrants, important work, but they don't belong there. They should be out there. So we're only working with 40% of our personnel, Border Patrol. Don't you know that the, you know, you can bet that the bad guys know this. Yeah, that's not what the American people paid for. They didn't pay to have Border Patrol, who should be patrolling our border, changing diapers and processing people instead of securing the border and doing that law enforcement work. Here's another case of fraud, waste, and abuse, if you ask me. A lot of Americans just paid their taxes yesterday, and now we find out that the DHS blew $17 million on unused hotel rooms for migrants. So, I mean, this is just another slap in the face of the American people, Congressman. You know, whenever they enter into those uh, contracts, they have to do a better job uh, in, uh, in negotiating because, look, when you say, hey, you're going to pay me for this block of rooms, whether they're used or not used, uh, you know, we just have to do a better job in negotiating. Now, one of the excuses that got given was, well, it was unprecedented. We didn't know this large number of people were coming across. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. That's so right. they just have to do a better job in negotiating those contracts. Well, to your uh, point, Congressman, it was a sole source contract, uh, and the government was obligated to pay the $17 million for hotel rooms that were not used. Why, why are you signing contracts like that? I, I don't have the answer. It's more of a hypothetical question. Brian, go ahead. Uh, Congressman, the main thing is we've had policies that didn't work and ones that did work. This is a non-policy. There is no policy at the border except for to be to overwhelm the border patrol and to diminish ICE and hurt their numbers and and their their ability to do their job. I, what is behind this? I mean, we don't even have a policy to debate. The Mayorkas and company are MIA, so and when they show up, they get blistered by the border patrol. What's behind it? Well, you have to ask them for the rationale. They don't ask you because they don't answer your calls. They don't come to visit you and ask what's going on. Well, you know, certainly I, you know, sitting on as the vice chairman of the uh, appropriations uh, subcommittee, you know, we certainly have 
put our, uh, what we've done is we try to put as much money as we can, but they, you know, their motives, you have to uh, ask them. But I can tell you, in talking to the men and women in green, they don't want to have somebody from D.C. come in and just give them a pat on the back. They want somebody to really have their back. And they don't. And right now, when you talk to men and women in green and in blue, they feel demoralized. They don't feel that Washington has their, their backs, and we got to do more than just give them a pat in the back. You know, the, the, the other 60 percent of the Border Patrol, the two sectors I mentioned, they want to be out there securing a border. They don't want to be changing the diapers and, and, and all that. And, and we got to understand. And one more thing. Look, it's okay to listen to immigration uh, activists when uh, when this policy has been made, but who's listening to the men and women in green? Who's listening Nobody. to the border communities, the mayors, the judges out there? You got to listen to the border communities and to the men and women in green. Yeah. These NGOs are making a lot of money off of this situation as well. I think that's another part of this story. And 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 the other part of it, Congressman, is your own party is bleeding Hispanic voters um, because of this chaos at the border. Really appreciate you joining us today. You've always been an honest broker um, on this issue in particular. Thank you for joining us this Thank morning. You, Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.